what is up everyone welcome back to another youtube video my name is mike i'm a full-time used book reseller i sell on both amazon and ebay my primary focus is selling on amazon through amazon fba i endure the convenience of sending my books into amazon and letting them deal with it if you hear anything in the background i got crazy cats running around here they're all high on catnip and running through the new toys we got them so Today's video is going to be another one of my vlog videos slash how to slash my opinion. So we're going to talk about my three ways you can save money and time as an Amazon reseller, whether you're starting out or whether you've been doing this for a while. So let's get right on into it. All right. So three ways to save you money and time, which is very important because at the end of the day, Time and money are the two most valuable things, you know, time being number one and money being number two, because you need to make money to have free time. And that's basically why, you know, it's one of the huge advantages for me doing Amazon versus my job. I can work a whole lot less and make a whole lot more. So it's kind of like, it's kind of foolproof. So the first thing is prepping and cleaning books. So you say, oh, what's prepping and cleaning books? So we got a book here, for example. See, so you got a Goodwill sticker. You got another sticker on the front here. So when I first started, I'm just going to reference some old, old things I used to do that I no longer do unless it's really, really needed. I have a box here of like alcohol prep pads. So what I would do is rip one of these bad boys open, get your little pad, wipe down the book, make it all nice and shiny before sending it in so i have not done this probably in six months to a single book so when you're buying books you know you're not going to buy something if it's got a big big turd stain on the front you know you're just going to leave that behind so i haven't bothered using any of these cleaning wipes or cleaning any books in at least six months now you say well you got to get the label off so i highly highly recommend having a heat gun it's going to make your life so much easier getting these labels off none of that goo gone scotty peeler crap literally i have a pretty nice heat gun craftsman all you do is just shoot it at the label let me see here pointing at the label for like two or three seconds and then that label is going to peel right off and when i say peel off i'm talking it's not going to leave anything behind it's not going to leave any residue any of that stuff behind so you're not sitting there with goo gone and then alcohol swabs and the peeler trying to get the label off. The heat gun, it doesn't even got to, you can get, listen, you can even use a hair dryer, all right? You want to be cheapo? You got a hair dryer laying around? You know, I got a few hair dryers for my, uh, my wonderful luscious locks here. You could even use that. Give it a try. I'm telling you, once you try your hair dryer or you buy a cheap heat gun, these stickers, peel right off and it's going to change your life i used to honestly like i still say today peeling stickers off is my least favorite part but with a with a heat gun it's not that bad you literally heat it peel it and move on you're not cleaning up anything after you get the sticker off you're not soaking it in google to even get the sticker to come off stop wasting time prepping these books you're selling used books I've even seen or heard some stories about people who put every book in a poly bag. None of that nonsense. We're literally scanning the back after we get the sticker off with the heat gun, listing it, throwing a label on, putting it in the box, and we're done with it. Once you get this down, you're, you're going to be able to fly through boxes of books. I mean, it's going to be quick. Peel all the stickers off at once. Then you want to go in, fill up a box, list them, label them out the door stop wasting time prepping them you're selling used books they don't they don't gotta they don't gotta smell new they can smell like stinky old feet that's not a big deal it's gonna sit in the warehouse somebody buying it knows it's used you guys see my feedback i'm all positive feedback so clearly if i'm not getting negative feedback all the time with what i'm doing it's working and it's going to save you time and that's why another reason i always say list everything in good all right here we go but Mike, this book is this book this book is like brand new, Mike. I want to list it as very good. Listen, honestly, it doesn't matter. Good good is good enough. Good is good. Yeah, good is good enough to get the buy box. 
that's all we're worried about. If you want to list something at very good and try to get an extra few bucks, it's not worth it. Think about the time you're wasting. You need a different condition note. What are you going to use the same condition note for your good and very good books? That's just silly. Always list as good. Unless it's really messed up, then you list it as acceptable and you change your condition note with what's wrong with it. Or unless it's sealed, brand new, then you can put very good, like new, and you can put, hey, it's in the plastic wrapping still. So that's another thing that's going to save you time. I know it might not seem like a lot right now if you're just starting out and you're not listing many books, but down the road, when you know it's good and you have the same condition note, copy and paste it, copy and paste it, you're going to save so much time. So that's the first one, prepping. Stop licking your books clean. Just send them in to Amazon. I promise you they'll sell the same. <laughs> Next up, we have sourcing efficiency. So me and Deb came up with both of these because I always kind of pick her mind because she's not an Amazon seller. So I like hearing what her aspect is on things. And we both agree. Sourcing efficiency is huge. So this was Deb's kind of main one and it, and it makes it all makes sense. Plan your trips. You don't need to be thrifting all these days. Two, three days a week, if you have multiple stores lined up or if you're doing it part-time, even one day a week is going to work. So you want to plan your trips, have a route where you're going. Don't keep going to the same stores. Let these stores at least sit for two weeks before going to it again. And two weeks is kind of on the low end. You want to let it sit probably three or four weeks. Let them get new books out so you're not chasing and scanning the same books. But planning your trips... It's going to save you time and it's going to save you gas. You don't want to be going out every single day, driving 30 minutes to go to one thrift store. If you can drive an hour and hit five, six thrift stores on the way back as quick as you can, you know, you're only scanning books, that's that's going to be a game changer for you. You don't need to be going out every single day. You're going to get burnt out. You're going to get frustrated. That is not the way. So that was number two. Number three, over investing. It takes money to make money. Yes, but it takes smart money to make money. There is, you know, I know, I'm not, I know I'm not the only YouTube channel you all watch. There's a million programs, a million courses, all of this software. Listen, down the road, if you want to try something, go for it. But honestly, you don't need none of these courses that these people are selling you. You don't need none of this fancy software. Everybody, everybody wants to have this listing software. Everybody wants to have. Uh, take this course and how they can make a little bit more money. You don't need none of that to this day. And I, I'm willing to bet I can list through my phone faster than somebody can list through a seller list. And listen, if you want to challenge me, we can do a YouTube live and I'll go one on one with you because I can list super quick through my phone and a seller list. It's going to take you time to, to figure it out. It's a completely different process with everything. And it's just, once you get in the habit of doing something well, continue doing it. Don't switch it up. I send in hundreds of books every week, and I don't have any issues using the seller app. It saves me money. And yes, there are things you need to invest in. Like, hey, I'm a big fan of a repricer, but I'm not telling you to go buy a repricer right away. You need at least 300 books to get my approval to have a repricer. So start off small. And as you grow and as you start making sales, you can invest in these things for your business and that's the way that it makes sense, you know? You don't want to go out day one and just, I'm going to get everything. I'm going to get the database scout IQ, which is another thing that I only use live. And I always preach, I only use live. It's cheaper. I understand the database has a purpose, but not for basically anywhere in this country anymore because internet is available everywhere. You know, 5G is basically anywhere. So be cheaper with it. I'm still cheap. You know, I make a decent living doing books. But if I can save money somewhere, I'm going to. Sure, I could try a seller list and maybe it'll save me a little bit of time when I'm listing books. But you have to realize all that initial time and figuring out the program, understanding how it works. And it doesn't it doesn't add up to me. So it's fine to invest in yourself, but invest in the right things, you know, invest in a good scanner, invest in, you know, a, a normal printer. You don't you don't need a fancy thermal printer. Deb's got a Rolo printer. All right, that's fancy, fancy, fancy. But it works for her business because she just uses it for her shipping labels. And she needed a business right off. So it wasn't right off the gate, hey, I'm going to go buy a $250 Rolo printer. You just need cheap stuff, you know? Be a cheapo with it. See where it goes. Don't go crazy starting out and 
just throwing all this money at something when you don't understand the basics of how things work. So that was number three. We have prepping. Stop licking your books before you send them in. Sourcing. Be smart. Plan trips, you know, little mini thrift store vacations. Five, six hours, two times a week, three times a week, you're going to be golden. You're going to find plenty of books. You're going to save on gas. You're going to save on time. And you have free days. You know, you have all these free days. Over investing. You don't need all these programs. None of you is better buy a course on selling used books. If I see anybody buying a course on selling used books, we're going to be fighting because any question you got, I can answer. And guess how much I'm going to charge you? Zero dollars and zero cents. You guys know I respond to all my comments, all my emails. You know, I might not might not be right away, but I'm going to respond and I'm going to give you basically your answer without charging you anything for it. So those are the three things. Hopefully this video helps somebody out. I appreciate you all watching. Make sure to comment, like, and subscribe. And stay tuned for more used book videos. Bye-bye.